Shara, and I love digging into a good book. So let's read, learn, and grow together, one diverse character at a time. Welcome to Inara's Bookshelf. Hi, everyone. Here we are at the last episode of season one of Inara's Bookshelf. It's been an awesome ride, and I want to end up with a topic close to my heart. Well, actually, it's close to my head. It's hair. This is Brizzy by Clara Bell Ortega and illustrated by Rose Busamra. It's a graphic novel about a young Latina girl named Marlene and her hair. Marlene has a big head of beautiful curls, but she was always told it wasn't pretty. What she was taught by her family was that straight hair is good hair, and anything else is bad. So every weekend, Marlene's mom takes her to the salon to get her hair done so it's presentable and good. But Marlene hates it. She doesn't want to hide her hair anymore. So she goes on this journey full of emotions and a few bumps. With the help of her best friend and her tia Ruby, she tries to find love for her natural hair. This book really touched me and it reflected a lot of my own journey with my hair. I didn't think my natural hair could be considered pretty because all the girls I saw on TV or in my class had straight hair, and they were always told they have the good hair. So I hid my curls, just like Marlene was forced to do. My bio mother would straighten it, or I would slick it back into a bun or braids, so you couldn't see the texture of my curls at all. That was until I started seeing other beautiful people with hair like mine, and it had a huge effect on me. Just like seeing her Tia Ruby wearing her curls proudly impacted Marlene. I went on that same path. Of course, it had some bumps, but I learned how to properly care for my special hair and had the help and support of my mom and dad along the way. This book really reflects how hard it can be for young girls with curls, specifically young Latina and black girls, to feel pride in their natural hair. And I believe it's such an important topic to discuss. So let's talk about it. You might remember Claire Bell Ortega from my Witchlings episode. And if you haven't seen it yet, you should check it out. Let's go talk to her first about frizzy and hair. All right, hi Clara Bell. We're hi. here to talk about your newest book, Frizzy, which is a graphic novel. I loved reading this book so much oh, and I connected you. to it a lot. And it talks about this young Latina girl, Marlene, and her experience and journey with her hair. Can you talk a bit about why you chose to talk about that? Sure, so I am Dominican American and we are obsessed with hair. There are many Dominican salons we're sitting in on right now. Um, and we just really love straightening our hair and there's this whole thing when your hair is curly or frizzy that they say your hair is bad. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about that in the book and sort of explore where the idea that curly hair is bad hair and straight hair is good hair. And so frizzy really examines a lot of European beauty standards and why they're so important in Dominican Republic and what happens when the younger generation starts to undo some of those ideas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, straightening and good versus bad hair is such a strong theme in this book. What was your relationship with your hair? It took me until I was much older, like a full adult, to realize like I could wear my hair curly for special events, which sounds weird maybe for people who didn't grow up with that sort of culture. But for us, whenever we had like a wedding or a party or anything, we always went to the salon to get our hair straightened. And I started to realize like, hey, maybe my hair is fine just the way it is. Even for work sometimes, they would give me a hard time wearing my hair curly. And I just wanted to talk about like how wrong that is. and for kids who are struggling with their own looks and being themselves, how they can start asking questions of the people in their lives and start to, you know, just embrace themselves for who they are. But for me, when I was little, I didn't really even second guess it. I just mm -hmm. sort of went with what I was told and yeah. it wasn't until I was older that I had access to, you know, YouTube and all of that yeah. stuff, which they also try to disastrous results in yeah. the book. I also went through that same struggle with my hair. It took me a while to sort of get into wearing my hair naturally, curly. My bio mom would straighten it and I was told I looked prettier that way. You know, once you wash your hair after it's straightened, it gets curly again, right? <laughs> so I guess she's called like my kryptonite. Oh no. Which I think <laughs> is kind of sad. And my dad helped me see that, you know, it's not kryptonite. It just helps me get back to my natural hair. And Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, well our hair is like, 
so important, but it's a connection to like our roots and our heritage. And like from, you know, I know where your family's from Barbados, right? Mm -hmm. And my family's from Dominican Republic. And like, I see it as a connection back to the island. I wasn't born there, but absolutely when I go there, my hair is curly and like just, you know, windswept and I'm in the ocean. And it's just the best feeling to just feel like myself and not have to worry about always keeping my hair straight and neat. And it just looks beautiful the way it is. And your hair is so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, my little sister has some of the most beautiful curls that I've ever seen. And I really want to be there for her in that journey so she doesn't have to go through that same thing that I experienced and that she knows that she's so beautiful. So. Yeah, I love this book so much, so um, thank you. Th thank you for reading it. It's made for kids just like you, so. I also had a chance to sit down with Peter Ramsey to talk about his experience producing an Oscar-winning short film all about loving your hair. It's actually called Hair Love. It tells the story of a father learning how to style his daughter's hair. It was also released as a really beautiful picture book. I love that book mm -hmm. so much, mm -hmm. and the short was so adorable. <laughs> How was the process of turning that into a short film? Matt got in touch with me. We were friends on Twitter. And he got in touch with me and said, hey, you know, I had this idea for a short animated film. Could you take a look and, and tell me what you think? So he sent me this little script. And I read it and I said, oh my god, this is a, we'll make a fantastic animated short. You have to do it. And uh, so it was, a, it was a cool little team of people uh, uh, who worked on that short together and, and made it what it is. And I was, you know, I, I was an executive producer, so I wasn't in there every day doing the work. I'd kind of like see stuff every once in a while and go like, oh yeah, that looks great. Oh yeah, maybe you should think about that. Change that again. Um, but uh, I, I, I did very little. I just was like a cheerleader with my little pom-poms on the side. And uh, the, the guys did a great job with it. It's, it's, really, it's a really good little thing to have out in the world. I also talked to writer Lawrence Hill about how his character Beatrice learns to care for her hair and his own hair experiences too. I love all of these characters so much. You know, they're all different kinds of animals. They're all talking animals, which is just adds so much to the magic of this forest and of Beatrice's story. My personal favorite is Killjoy the lemur. <laughs> Do you have a favorite talking animal in the story? I really love Killjoy too. And one of the things that Killjoy really excites in me, Killjoy is a lemur who's also a dentist without a degree, and she also does hair and makeup. And one of Beatrice's challenges in this book that Killjoy helps out with is that she doesn't know what to do with her hair. You know, she's got no, she's a young black girl with a beautiful head of hair, but she has no hair products in the forest. She's got oatmeal and books and that's pretty well it. And so she's got to find a way in the forest to deal with her wonderful hair. And she has some missteps, some mistakes. Like first she tries to smash open a coconut and use the coconut water. That's not going to cut it. Coconut water is not going to help her with her hair. And so she's got to learn to sort of work with her beautiful hair and love it. And finally she 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 finds some avocados and she mashes them up because that gives her a bit of oil and grease to work with the hair and do something fun with it. And so uh, Killjoy, the lemur, is going to teach her a little about hair and is going to teach her how to dance as well and is going to introduce notions of blackness to her and she's going to cornrow her hair. And so Killjoy plays kind of a loving but grumpy role as a knowing, wiser adult kind of figure. In the, I was born in 1957, so I'm growing up in the 60s in Toronto. I was taught unfortunately that my hair was ugly and it took me a long time to sort of grow into my hair and to love it and to grow out a huge afro when I was 17 because back then if you want to assert your blackness and sort of be proud of being black the hairstyle of choice was the afro but it took me like 17 years before I actually began to love my hair and I want all children to love how they look and who they are you don't get to choose who you are or what skin color you're born with or what your um supposed racial identity is and you should just love yourself and I want all children to be able to feel that and so Beatrice she loves herself she loves her hair she's confident about that I wish I'd felt that way about myself when I was a boy but I want all children to feel that way discovering and growing into and loving her hair is a way of discovering and growing into and loving herself yes I think so too you can see there's a lot to unpack about hair and our relationship with our hair from curly hair to afros, alopecia, braids, and everything in between. We need to see the beauty in each other's natural hair and respect it. 
Also, and this is very important, ask before you touch. There are lots of books, from picture books to middle grade books like Brizzy to adult books and how to's. There's a book out there for you no matter where you are in your hair journey. I want everyone to remember, your hair is your crown and it's unique to you. There's no one out there like you. Embrace your hair, learn how to care for it, and you'll be great. Love yourself and your hair. Thank you for joining me on the first season of Inara's Bookshelf. Make sure to check out our website and social media for more book recommendations. And I'll see you next time on Inara's Bookshelf. Bye.